Hello everyone. Thank you for joining us today for the Contact at Once webinar, How to Make Digital Retailing Work for Your Dealership. We're using ClickMeeting as a platform today, and if you have any questions, feel free to use the chat box, and we'll respond towards the end of the presentation. My name is Aaron Evans, and I'm the Digital Marketing Coordinator for Driving Sales, and I'll be moderating today's webinar. Our speaker today is Ed Parkinson. Ed has been working with car dealers for 27 years, championing many new services that move the needle for his customers. He helped pioneer the use of call tracking and measurements to increase sales and quantify the return on marketing during his seven years at Who's Calling Incorporated. Ed began selling and coaching auto dealers on digital messaging technologies in 2006 and joined Contact at Once in 2007. So without further ado, I will turn it over to Ed. Okay, thank you, Aaron. Hello, everyone. And uh, I just want to bring in a little human side to, um, to this today. I, I work from home and uh, when I'm not traveling. And this morning I got up at 6.15, did my normal chores, and then was at my computer uh, around quarter to seven. And uh, the coffee pot, I just walked it off. It's seven steps from my office, so I had made the coffee. And I was practicing for today. And I said, you know, what am I gonna start this meeting with? So I came up with, you know, I, I just think digital retailing is popping up everywhere in the auto automobile industry. And if you look at Root and Associates, they're saying that 99% of buyers expect a negative shopping experience. And we need to understand that digital retailing are a set of tools designed to improve the shopping experience. And the one example I could you know, quickly think of is because buyers don't want to spend four hours in a car dealership to take delivery. And our industry is hedging a bet that digital retailing will turn a negative shopping experience into a positive one. And with that said, um, we can all, we just can't jump in and do this blindly. I think we all have to take a step back and we have to understand that digital tools without a sound plan, structure, focused you know, personnel, and the conversational element for success that digital retailing will fail. And that's what I came up with to open. And my wife at the coffee pot said, oh, geez, Ed, I'm riveted. I can't wait for the next slide. So. There's, there's the human side. But today, my plan is to talk about why forcing digital customers into analog conversations could cost your dealership sales, and a couple of ideas on how to correct that, what a strong digital retailing strategy includes and how your team fits in, Tango, an approach that gives the best responses in the fastest time, and how your team can use this approach to build better customer relationships. I found a very interesting quote from former basketball coach John Wooden, and it was uh, delivered to his basketball great player, Bill Walton, who played many years in the NBA. When he was a senior, he said, it's the things you learn when you know it all that count. And I was humbled quite a bit in 2014 when Live Person acquired Contact at Once. I'm the second employee, been here for a long time. I passionately thought that I would change the way an industry communicates. And to a certain extent, had a lot to do with the growth of chat and text. But I thought that chat and text was the holy grail. Like I believed in my heart and in my mind that it would be the, the be all, the end all. And the reality is I was wrong. And, you know, I never considered so many things. I never considered that chat over the next few years may have a diminishing uh, impact that, you know, less and less people will use it. I never considered that toll-free numbers may, in fact, go away. I never considered that natural voice search could replace websites, which could happen in our industry. I never considered that AI would assist business to create greater efficiency. I never thought that every mobile device on earth would be enabled to have a business conversation securely between brands and consumers. I never considered that there would be this tango approach between bots and live advisors that don't necessarily work at the dealership. And back to bots again, this constant interaction, this back and forth, and then have the ability to, um, to navigate and, and walk the customers through a process and then make seamless transfers to sellers inside a dealership. 
And the reality is that these things are in fact on their way. They are coming. And uh, and yes, contact at once live person. We currently back end many of those interactions that I just talked about. This is uh, just another quote I wanted to share with you all, but um, Steve Jobs, and he said, don't be trapped by dogma, which is living with the results of other people's thinking. And, you know, I, I, I took a look at the word dogma just to make sure I understood what it was. And it's basically that authoritative view that says, you know, we've done it this way all along, and this is the way we will continue to do it. And when I think of, you know, people like Steve Jobs, and when I think of uh, Walt Disney as another person, and even our CEO, Rob Lacasio, and the founder of our company, Mark Hayes, these people have an uncompromising urge and determination to change industry and to surpass new boundaries. So my, my, my advice to all of us, me, you, is that we all need to push back on the status quo. We need to challenge old ideas. We need to be an open platform and learn new things and embrace the art of the possible. Because if we don't do that, we are not going to be successful. I happened to spend six months recently working in the UK with automobile dealers. And the reason I pulled this slide up, this, this is a uh, director from Sky. Sky is the largest telecom and uh, TV company in the UK. And I would say being over in the UK and working with car dealers very closely, I would say that the UK is three to five years behind the US. And the one thing they told me for sure is that people in the UK would not embrace text messaging. And um, so Sky, what they did is they added a text messaging option to their IVR, basically offering customers the ability to move a conversation into a text. And here are the results. It launched in February. By October 2017, 40% of all customers were in fact engaging Sky through text messaging. And their goal, their objective in 2018 is to move it to 68%. And it kind of made me chuckle because when I think about, you know, that the dealers telling me in the UK that people won't text, well, then that would tell me that all of the people watching TV and using the internet through Sky would never buy a car. Right, so um, you know it's happening. You know we need to embrace it. But what are the shoppers? What are the shoppers doing? So I want you to think about that for a moment. The way we think, we believe that consumers are already conversational. That messaging is a primary function on our phones, especially to get things done. 18 of the world's 22 most popular apps include messaging. The top seller last year on Cyber Week where the voice activated systems. And I can tell you that OEMs are already planning for voice assisted searching and buying. I think of this as a three legged stool, communication in general. The first leg of the stool is um, how do we start things? How do we find things? And today we use things like Google, Siri, Alexa, and we use those type, those type of things to start our journey. The second leg of the stool is how do we communicate with our friends and our family? Are we primarily calling or are we messaging? And I think the answer is we're quite often we are messaging. And the third leg, and it's often the short leg, really for most business, especially the automobile business, is how do we allow communication, excuse me, with our dealer? So, you know, the question is, do we allow communication to take place in a format the customer chooses? And that's a really important question. Like in my core industry, which has been chat, you know, many dealers believe that, you know, we can't do it or we don't have time. So we take a customer that's coming in on a chat per se, we outsource the conversation. So now the, the customer's still on that channel, but then we're disconnecting the conversation for an analog voice call to take place some point later. And that's the risky part, that's the rub, and that's where friction comes in. First, the thing we have to do is we have to reach consumers at all key endpoints. So the question is, what are the endpoints? And I want you to think of it this way. Think of every place that you possibly could have a phone number or a place to someone to email you, both on site, so your website, and off-site. 
think of all the places where there could be possible off-site impressions. So cons consumers that are shopping for cars, they potentially can see your brand everywhere and they have a phone in their hands, which means when you think about it, we as people, whether we are online or offline, we are constantly connected. We are tethered you know, to the internet and to voice commands. So you should enable these digital connections everywhere possible. And what I did in these bubbles is I just put up, you know, the most obvious ones, you know, publishers, Facebook, uh, Google AdWords, Google My Business, you know, Facebook would include, of course, Marketplace, um, Apple Business Chat, which is not available to us at the dealership level yet, but it will be coming soon. Print every place. The key is, is to, to enable these digital connections everywhere. And then that leads to the question of what is a conversation worth? And I often think that, you know, do we really take these conversations seriously enough? I found this quote. I found this quote from Dean Evans at uh, Hyundai. He's the CMO. And he said that frictionless retail is happening all around us. Speed is the number one consumer demand today. So when I think about conversations, I say to myself, hmm, has a car ever been sold without a conversation? You know, I think the conversation is, the, is at the core of every sale. I see it being worth just about everything. I think it's that important. And here is an example of a successful conversation. What we believe is that a successful conversation is built upon a relationship. And I decided to spell it out like this. So if you wanted to take your phone and take a picture of it, it's that important. A successful conversation will reinforce, reinvigorate, and provide clarity. Let me explain that. By reinforcing, there's one key question that could be asked on every conversation, which is, why are you looking? What a great way to reinforce that inbound communication. And to reinvigorate is to bring energy. It's to bring energy to the conversation, energy such as you know, colors and options. It could even be the fear of loss, right? We all want something more when, when, when there's a, a possibility that we may lose it. So, you know, it could be a, a statement such as, oh, wow, that car, everybody seems to be chatting with me on that car, and then provide clarity. And I believe that clarity comes in two forms. It comes in the conscious form and the subconscious. So the conscious form of clarity is answer the question. You know, answer the question, be transparent, you know, be truthful, answer it. Give, you know, elucidation to the concern. And then there's the subconscious clarity, which is, that customer, when they are speaking with us, whether it's over the phone or through a message, their subconscious mind is saying things like, do I like you? Do I trust you? Are you going to help me? Are you my friend? Will this work? And, and that's what it's looking for. So these are really important parts to any conversation. And then, you know, we believe to always honor the dealer's brand and respect the personality of its people. And we know that you folks are best suited to understand consumer intent and provide resolution. So when this conversation begins, you know, I need to reinforce, reinvigorate, provide clarity, listen for intent, and then provide resolution. And then when you tango, so it takes two to tango, right? When you tango and you do those things, you've put a customer in a happy place. You put that customer on a frictionless path to retail and anything less is unfulfilling. And that's super important for us all to understand. The point behind this slide, it's to make you think, but it's also to you know, have us evaluate where we might be losing things, like where is the slippage? So the line going up, the graph, is I think about all of the money our industry spends and, and an individual car dealership will spend to generate opportunity. And we know historically that by adding forms of messaging, and let me define that, by adding call to action icons for chat or for text or even for messenger, we know the mean lift to the number of connections to that business is at least 20%. We've seen it as high as 40 and 50% even through some publishers. But then what happens where this graph starts to go in the opposite direction is where we create friction. So some businesses, you know, have a tendency, like a dealership may have a tendency, 
So you just say, you know what, we'll do chat. We know we have to because everyone else is doing it, but we're not going to take it seriously. And what we'll do is we'll let somebody else, which, you know, hey, it does happen, right? You, you know, even contact the ones here. We support our dealers and we'll answer when they don't. But um, with these CRM lead submissions, we we now, as the dealership personnel, have to contact the customer back on a different channel than they came in on. And really where this gets escalated and where really you re we really need to think about it, when you look around you at all of these major brands that are bringing messaging into the, into the, uh, into the you know, into, into now, right? Making it happen. For example, on March 29th, Apple Business Chat went live with six companies worldwide. And uh, Home Depot is one of them. But um, all of those companies, well, they, they suppress customer information. They, they hide the, the customer's personal information. If you look at Google, Apple, Facebook, autotrader.com, cars.com, both on their texting tool and inside their messenger app, they mask the customer information. And one of the places where there's massive slippage is our, um, our what's the word I'm looking for? Our need to use our CRM to follow up. And I just wonder if we, if we really need to Think about that and think hard about it because if those leads go into the CRM, then we use the CRM to follow up with the customer. We then most often are calling that customer back, we are emailing that customer, or we're using a texting tool from the CRM that requires a new opt-in for the conversation. And to me, that's a rub. That's a major disconnect. You know, you should all have the software inside your business to be able to communicate with that customer on the line that they came in on the first place. So if you think about it, if you were outsourcing, let's say all your conversations and 10 leads came in from, you know, AutoTrader and you're, you know, the, the company that we're using to answer, you know, answered 70% um, uh, got lead, lead information on. And then if you're really good at what you do, you will get, reach 25 to 50% of those customers. So for every 10 that are reaching out to you, you are getting back to two or three. But if you had the software in your system where the customer came in on staying on the same channel, your response rate would be 100%. And that's a smart path. That's a contact that wants path, right, with their, with their consumers. Emails, follow-up calls, you know, just the time that goes by, the labor that we put in to try to reach customers, you know, kills opportunity. That reconnection path that I just mentioned, that path and that pain and then the unfulfilled clients, you know, at those moments when we don't answer all the questions, we don't provide clarity, you know, we, you know, they're unfulfilling. And when that happens, it's, it's really dangerous, you know, for our business. So I just wanted to point that out. And that's what that slide was all about. You know, this is just something else. You know, we always think hard for the last 10 years while I've been in contact at once about what is, what is the reconnection path? What is the, uh, the degradation from, you know, an email to what the customer wants. And you know, we realized many years ago that the, the current format to do that best was SMS. So this is an example of a dealer. I was pretty pumped to see this, but the words in this transcript are not important. This is the text portion, portion but when I looked at the pie chart on the right, this conversation originated on a chat. And what this dealership did is they, without the chat ending, they invited the customer into a text. So they utilize the platform to start a text and the customer opted in. And then this conversation continued via text messaging. The dealer at one point sent a, a, a picture. And then you can see here that the customer viewed the media. That's the thumb up. I called this dealership because I was curious. This person, in fact, took delivery of that vehicle, um, which is pretty cool. It's a good success story. But again, using a tool to move the customer into a conversation that's ongoing continuous. In this example, this is a dealership that had 18 missed phone calls, but utilizing one of the technologies we deploy that if the customer called on a mobile device, they could text the customer back. And this is an example of the chat transcript. So I got real excited when I saw this one because this customer made an appointment to come in on a Saturday and take delivery of a car. Now for full disclosure, I called this dealer and this particular, I should find one that's really a happy ending. This person was a no-show but this person didn't buy. However, you can see here that a deployment of technology enabled a reconnection on a missed phone call. Just trying to advance the slide. So manage, 
message conversations with a single tool. And this is just an interesting kind of phenomenon that's happening, that's going on today in our business. And, um, you know, I kind of have a, a fun little lineup here, say no to multiple chat and text tools. You know, our parent company's live person, and we do business with 18, excluding all the car dealers, 18,000 major brands across the world. And when you look at companies like Discover, and Fidelity and Home Depot and Lowe's and Estee Lauder and Sky and these big companies, these companies do not run three and four and five different chat and text tools inside their business. And uh, for example, Home Depot sells John Deere tractors, but John Deere doesn't say to Home Depot in our ad, you're going to run you know, this ad, but you're going to use this number, which is our texting tool. So make sure you deploy it inside your dealership and so on. And then over here is just a little tongue in cheek humor, but this is a um, a snapshot from the National Lampoon Christmas Vacation when Chevy Chase was being totally dysfunctional because he's got 600 extension cords, you know, plugged into a single outlet, and they're they're trying to turn the lights on in, in the house. And and really, that's the level of complicatedness and dysfunction that we're beginning to see as many dealerships are running three and four and five different chat tools and texting tools inside their business. And it, it's just illogical and it's something our industry is going to need to address in short order. So what is a digital strategy? And what I did, I just got um, definitional here and I, I looked it up and I said, what is it? It's a plan of action designed to achieve business goals by implementing digital initiatives. So the question to you is, do you have one? Do you have one today? Another question might be, how long have you had it? Because I would argue that if it's older than six months since you've re-looked at it, it, it might be, in fact, um, outdated. Or are we just doing a, a blind embrace of things, meaning, you know what, I need to get that because everybody else is, is having it. And um, dovetailing into digital retailing and digital strategy is conversational commerce. And it's another important term to understand because the conversational part of all of this is, is truly the heartbeat. It's where things are won and where things are lost. And I explained hopefully pretty passionately a few minutes ago on the value of a conversation, but it's simply the intersection of messaging and digital retailing. It's an important component. So here's an example of a digital tool without a strategy and why it will fail. Last week, I was in San Antonio and I was visiting dealers. And these numbers actually were quite consistent across three dealerships. And these three dealerships were using, um, it was actually a competitor's chat tool and they had a 70% lead capture rate, which sounds pretty good. And then 63% of the time, the, the, the chat provider said to the dealer, hey, I want you to join in and take over a conversation. And what we found is in three stores, the rate of answer when the business was asking for help, and hey, that, this can happen with contact at once too, right? Anybody was between 11 and 18%. Like that is not good, right? That's a business failing because it didn't have a strategy to support, to support the digital retailing tool. And it's super important. So what should a digital strategy include? The first thing that it's going to include are the people. So who will be using the tools? Who is accountable to use the tools? For example, you know, live advisors could be product specialists. These are things that we've done now with uh, several OEMs that can guide consumers along the digital retailing path and make a seamless entry back into the dealership. So who, are, who is using it? Process. We must define exactly what your staff will do and how they will integrate with the technology. So in the last example I just gave, where the messaging company is trying to get the dealer to be involved, there was no set process, right? That they were failing. But we need to have a smooth handoff from these live advisors to your team when a you know potential buyer is ready to come to the dealership. And then platform and products and we could break these out but to keep it simple just bring them together but when people and process are established we then must consider the platform and the products 
and um, we have digital retailing products from strong companies such as dealer.com and CDK, but we can't forget the messaging part. It's a key component to the success. But I want to, what I wanted to share was in the bot building example, you know, live person, our parent company is a leader in bot technology. I had a chance to interview um, Eshwar Pradishan last, um, last uh, month and um, just, just to learn a lot more about bots and what we're doing. And Eshwar is a real interesting person, but you know, he said to me that when we go into companies like Home Depot and Hawaiian Airlines and we sit down with executives and users at all levels and uh, we pull out paper and put it all over the walls, the first thing that we try to do is to, it's like a three-legged stool, he said, it's to understand the brand's voice. What does the brand want to say? And then we understand the personality of its people. And then from there, we take a deep dive into consumer intent and resolution. And then we look at things such as what is the degradation process from the form of communication the customer, the customer came in on and what they may leave with. Like, for example, there are companies out there, I think um, Estee Lauder might be one, where consumers are clearly given a path to come back, like through Facebook and through SMS messaging. And then we also look at you know, what are the possible third party plugins that could potentially disrupt this platform, create progress, you know, and uh, development uh, delays, or even make things dysfunctional. So these are all the things that go into platform and products that we have to think about in the digital retailing element. Other things are channels, you know, what channel will the customers connect with our people? You know, what are those endpoints? Some of those things that I had mentioned earlier, and then user experience, your brand's voice, again, your team's personality, having a successful conversation that is actually, you know, having them uh, have that clear degradation process to SMS. So these are the things that we have to think about, possibly uh, a concierge experience, co-browsing to help the consumer along that process. There's been studies done, I think they're coming up in a, in a future slide with uh, Root and Associates stating that customers are extremely willing and actually desire to have people help them navigate. And then finally, um, you know, is the customer winning, right? That, that's probably perhaps the most important part, you know, with digital strategy. But again, conversational, the conversational element is at the front of all this. So conversational commerce, I did mention it before, but it's worth mentioning again. I just wanted to define it again. It is the intersection of messaging and digital retailing. And uh, again, I mentioned uh, March 29th, Apple, ABC went live. And we, this industry, we are right on the edge of something new. And uh, not sure exactly where it's all going today, but I wanna remind everyone not to forget the old news. And that is today, 100% of your shoppers have a phone in their pocket which means they are constantly connected, they are constantly tethered. People do not shop the way they used to. That's a reality. Mobile devices allow these micro moments. You know, it's something you might wanna look up on Google, but in these micro moments, we wanna be there, right? We wanna be, be quick and, and, and we wanna answer the questions. And these micro moments, as you all know, they happen day or night, they happen during soccer practice, why you know, mom or dad has a few minutes while the coach is coaching to continue their search or bedtime, you know, after the kids, you know, are, are asleep. And um, <clears throat> and no one, I would say no one, well, almost no one likes the car buying process as it stands today. So um, I think we have to embrace all this and be ready for it. Just uh, for full disclosure, this is actually a moving GIF. We had a, a technical issue, but just pointing out that in conversational commerce, these are just examples I had teed up where you're actually seeing a full conversation flow through purchase that are actually done you know, through, through someone's um, smartphone. So digital retailing is just a part of this conversational uh, commerce. You know, it's very interesting when you think about it. Um, conversational commerce today, and not tied to the car business, but it only represents about 11% of the gross national product. Amazon has about 50% market share. And I think over the next few years, we're going to see a dramatic change in that area as more and more customers, you know, move forward with conversational commerce and digital retailing. But how does your team fit into all of this? 
And again, I filled this slide up with more words than I typically would do in a presentation, thinking you might want to take a you know, picture of it. But who are the best resources in the dealership? And I would challenge you to really think hard about that, because to me, the best, the best resources may not always be the BDC. They may be in addition to the BDC. You know, what I've learned in all my years in the car business is every dealership, every dealership has a player or two, meaning a salesperson or two that are really damn good at what they do. And you know what? Why not let them talk to customers when they can? Managers, typically very stable inside the dealership, usually really, really good at what they do. Why not enable them as a resource to potentially talk to a customer? I would also say don't allow brick and mortar to trap you, meaning that there's an opportunity now, like with, for example, our technology on a mobile device, you can be conversational completely everywhere through a single device, and you don't need to be within the walls of the dealership to do it. So don't let those things tie you down. I would say get everyone possible involved. If it's that important, get the whole team. One thing I've learned, when you get a general manager or an owner, sales manager to get involved, you know, and, and these folks are, are running businesses or running business lines. When they jump in and answer a conversation, everything changes. It gets the attention of the whole dealership. I would say be ready to rock and roll at lunchtime. There's one thing we've identified a contact at once, and you may already know this from your website traffic. It goes up at lunchtime. Surprisingly, Friday nights are pretty darn busy, and so are Saturday mornings early. Like while you're in your sales meeting at 8 a.m. or getting your coffee at 7 a.m., customers are shopping. So why not be available for them? A missed message should be blamed on someone or something. They have to be addressed. So in the example I gave where the, the dealership, this was a highly functional BDC. I was there. There were people everywhere. There was a BDC manager. He really seemed to have his act together. And their team was only responding to 18%. And the reason for it, perhaps, you know what? It wasn't managed at the level it needed to be. You need to blame it on some, someone or something. Reward those who participate and blame those that do not. It might be a thing you have to do to get the team ready to play. Because as we move forward with digital retailing and as we start to embrace new technologies, we can't miss conversations. Like we got to be there when they take place. So ask yourself, are my conversations successful? And do they reinforce, do they reinvigorate, provide clarity? Does my team listen for intent and provide resolution? Did this customer leave this conversation fulfilled? If they have done that, you have put the customer in a happy place. You have in fact done your job. So again, continuing with how does your team fit in? Understand that consumers want to save time and not be pressured. It's important. Don't allow brick and mortar to trap you. Push digital retailing content online. So, you know, really, it's back to the beginning where anyone can find you. Make sure they can find you through a form of messaging. Some of our customers see 50% close rates from digital retailing engagement. So we are seeing things like uh, one example might be the credit app. So we have deployed uh, credit apps with certain OEMs. And when a customer fills out that credit app, the chance of closing is north of 50%. So that's important. Uh, our marketing team working with Root and Associates shared some stats, but consumers still want relationships with the dealers and their expertise when it's time to buy. And that is what you all do best. A Root and Associates study said seven in 10 consumers, they said they like the idea of a guided shopping experience. This is just not an idea. We have done this with OEMs and where we've taken a portion of our staff, got them highly trained in a key area on a product line, and used those associates to actually guide consumers through the path. Another study was said that a majority of consumers said they'd fill out more forms online with the help of a live advisor via messaging. And this is what we're seeing now with live person and the parent company. I just um, attended the, uh, the quarterly meeting and uh, what was it? I, I think they were talking about um, one of the telecom companies, U.S. telecom company with messaging. But when they deployed through um, Apple Business Chat, they, they typically had seen single digit returns in sales from impressions. And now it's tracking north of 13 percent. 
So that's the idea of assisting, consumer-assisted um, conversation. And then Tango with live advisors. You know, the automotive Tango term is something that we have a trademark on today. But um, it's, it's sort of allowing people, your people, our people, it's the blend of science and technology and, 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 the, and, and the art of people to complete a cycle, you know, with a conversation to move customers forward in their purchase path. So again, with automotive um, Tango, just a little bit more, I would define this as, and I just kind of mentioned it a moment ago, as the art and science of Autobots, of live advisors assisting the dealership, of the dealership personnel, all working in harmony. They're in sync, they're in step for speedy conversational success, which is that cornerstone, which is the cornerstone of digital retailing. I think of it as the heartbeat, if you will, of uh, conversational commerce. And um, in our experience, when messaging is added to the digital retail experience, we see an increase in form fills. And our, you know, we know that our live advisors and a couple of the OEM programs we launched tactfully were able to guide consumers into the flow. And yes, with increased engagement forms, there is a much higher propensity for that customer to, um, to buy. So I think for all of us, as I bring this to a close, it's time for us to get ready for the conversational uh, commerce era that is uh, right in front of us. Thank you very much. Aaron? All right, Ed, well, thanks for the great presentation. Um, we want to open it up to questions as well. Feel free to chat in on the right-hand side in that panel and send any questions you have. I do have a couple I'd like to go over right now. Um, one person asks, if we're using text messaging for the sales end of an opportunity and maybe a customer buys a car, can we solicit them down the road maybe six months later for service via text? Yeah, so we, we have to be careful because of the, the, the laws on um, – on text messaging, so the answer would be um, not exactly. So the uh, well, the answer would be no, right? So if the customer has come in on a sales opportunity, we we need to keep that conversation as part of the sales, as part of the sale. What we would have to do is opt that customer back in. We would have to regain permission to start a new conversation on the service end. Okay, all right, and there's a second question. Um, kind of about the Tango approach that you mentioned and wondering how, um, if you could use your own people or do you have to use live advisors that you referred to? No, not at all. So we actually encourage the dealer staff. Uh, as a company, we feel very strongly that the people at the dealership, you know, are the most uh, qualified. But we also know it's not a perfect science. We've taken some pretty deep dives and I'm trying to think of the stats off the top of my head, but um, less than 50% of messages will get answered if there's not a tango element, right? Because people, you know, dealerships get busy during the day and people tend to shop deep into the night, you know, and on the weekends. So the, the tango approach will increase the number of conversations because it sort of increases the return in your ad spend because you're always there. But what we would do is we would just strongly encourage the dealership to be there as much as possible. All right, well, that wraps up today's presentation with Contact at Once. We appreciate everyone's attendance and participation today. Is there anything else that you would like to add before we end, Ed? Um, Aaron, the only thing I would add is I just wanted to thank um, all of the people out there because um, if it wasn't for what they did every day in their lives and the investment they make in the automobile business, people and companies like ours wouldn't be here. So I um, truly respect um, the effort that all of the people that we work with uh, give to our industry. So thank you. Awesome. Thanks again, everyone, for attending, and we'll hope to talk to you soon. Bye.